Hello again. Well, I'm back with the computer, having a little bit of fun with an Arduino. It turns out there's a whole new language to learn. Um, I'll give you a clue about how it works. One of the exercises that I often give um, new flight crew is to um, blindfold them. Oh, no! And then have them... Um, told what to do. So you have just two or three people and um, somebody has to tell somebody that's blindfold how to navigate a, a particular task. Sounds simple, doesn't it? But once you start talking, you realise that it isn't nearly as simple as you thought it was. So go towards the door. Well, they can't see the door. Or um, reach down and pick up the blue bar. Well, they can't see colour. Um, turn around and face me. Well, other than hearing their voice, they don't know where they are. Now, a language um, develops. And so they say, take half a step forward. Move to your left. So the instructions become very clear and very simple. Um, with the Arduino, it appears that that's what it needs it calls things differently than, than, than we would. So we might say, do it again. And it needs you to tell it to loop. So words that we understand what loop means, but it isn't what we would normally say in everyday conversation. Um, scratch my back right here. Loop. <laughs> Your wife would look at you as if you got three heads. No, do it again. So we would use much more comfortable words. Um, there's a thing called a sketch. A sketch? You want a drawing? Well, sort of, kind of. It wants a set of instructions. So there's a whole other language that we have to learn to be able to type, to tell the Arduino what it is you want the thing to do. So me telling it, move a servo from here to there, and do it in this amount of time, it's not going to listen to me. So I have got to learn another language. We're not going to get into all of that today. Don't worry. I'm going to have to figure it out. I'll type it in and then I'll show you when I've done it. Now, one of my secret weapon tricks with anything like this is find one that works and modify it. Um, don't have to reinvent the wheel. You really don't. Um, I remember with train controller, when it first came, I went, <gasps> because it's very complicated. So there was a demo um, that they had in the program. Well, all I've done to make mine work is modified that. And 15 years later or whatever it is, it's still on the demo. And so all I've done is modified that um, that program. Still works. I should really call it something else once I figure out what the layout's called, shouldn't I? So I'm going to have a little play. For example, I've already been fooling around with one of the little programs and I found out that any numbers that look a bit like that generally are referring to milliseconds. So a thousand of something is a second. And to prove it, I just changed in line 42 that to two. And so now my little LED is flashing. Oh, I've changed it back again now. So it's flashing on and off every second or something like that. So we've got that much working. A couple of practical questions. I don't know. Do I need a power supply in there? Or can I hook a servo up directly to these pins? I don't know that. I've got some breadboard around, so the practicalities we'll figure out as well. But the language is the um, problem of the day. Oh, and I'm completely sure I have no idea what the numbers on this board are. They seem to be more or less all the same. But it asked me, what board are you using? And I told it, well, I'm using an Arduino Uno. Um, it didn't work, so I tried another one. That didn't work either. So I thought, hmm. So I tried another one and another one. So don't give up. And finally, it said, aha, uh -huh, we found it. Um, so whatever it is, I should write down. You notice I had a yellow pad beside me. Write down what it is you're doing so that if you can't remember, you can go back and have a little look. Oh, one other thing. I'm not having to figure this all out on my own. I, uh, I went to the local bookshop and had a look. Nothing. So I got out my Kindle 
Um, I take a Kindle with me when I'm flying sometimes. And uh, I downloaded a book, um, a couple of books, actually. Some of them are written like um, I was a scientist or something. The interesting thing is with Kindle books, you can copy and paste the text and dump it into this uh, program. Or at least I'm hoping that's what I can do. One book I found was this one, Arduino Programming, a hands-on guide to coding. And it's got circuit building, creative projects, sketches. And, and I will say it isn't exactly gripping, but I have learned something. There's something called a library. Um, a library isn't a library. It's just a file, it seems to me. And here's one that says servo libraries. And this is how you control a servo. And it goes on. And but I tell you, this book is a cure for insomnia. I'm sure the author knows his stuff and probably would be a fun guy to hang out with. But oof. <laughs> we'll see if it gets in there, shall we? Anyway, I'm going to leave you alone for a minute. So talk amongst yourselves while I try and create uh, something that will do that with the servo. Hmm. Now then, answers to questions as I go. This cable might very well power the thing and it might be able to uh, keep the thing powered enough to run a little program. But of course, that cable won't be there when this is sitting under the um, model railway board. So we are going to have to find connections for power supply there. But I've got an idea. I'll be right back. Aha. Now, you might remember me showing you these before. These are um, plugs I have used in uh, lighting circuits on the model railway. Uh, even got the plus and minus marks. Well, that fits in there. So now all I have to do is find somewhere to poke the other end. You might also remember this. So I've got a ground and five volts there. Um, that will be just perfect. That's a computer power supply and you get these breakout boxes. Um, I'm sure you could get a wall wart or something else to plug in there too. So that I've got in the background. Um, yes. Also figured out this little fella. You remember this? This is the, um, what does it call itself? It has its name on the back. It's called a 16 channel pulse width modulation driver. So it's a servo driver. You can put a whole bunch of servos onto that. And my intent is to run that from that, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. First thing we need, lines of code. Now focus, let's get this thing done. I know, I know, it looks really complicated, doesn't it? It isn't. Whenever I say that, people always write in. Um, don't need this right now because the Arduino is indeed capable of driving one servo. So all of these wires are just joining power supply to rails and you'll notice there's nothing really else. There's just, yeah. Very simple. Um, I could tidy that up to the power supply is coming from there to those rails, to those wires, to the Arduino. It's also going to the servo. So the servo is being powered by this and so is the Arduino. So that's six of the wires. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, two more of the wires are simply joining the signal wire of the servo to the Arduino. And then the last two, I've decided one of the pins needs to come out here and join to the ground. Oh, I know it looks complicated. I'm not going to tidy it up right now, but I will in a minute. What have I learned about the coding? Um, I've learned that when you type it in here and you press the go button, there's a little arrow up there. If you press that, all of this goes whoosh into there. Um, and sometimes you get an error code that comes up here. Now, when I say sometimes, <laughs> all the time, if it's me. <laughs> so what I discovered, 
First thing is, I told you about the language. It's very specific. Um, I had a colon instead of a semicolon. I had a comma instead of a full stop. And it really doesn't like that. And what else had I done? Let me have a look here. Some Somewhere in there, I'd put a double R in right or something like that. And it just, yeah, doesn't like that. The delays are all in milliseconds and so on. And I haven't figured out what they're all doing just yet. I know there is a way to slow down the servo. We talked about this. Instead of it going zip, you can make it go zip. But for now, it's working. Um, I've also realized that the, the awkwardness of working in two rooms with this stuff, and I don't want this room to end up being a workshop. So, yeah. Anyway, let me show you what I've got. So all of this code, I told you I was going to copy and paste it. This is uh, Creative Commons CC. Whenever it says that, it's Creative Commons. You can copy and use it. You just have to give them credit. And um, then over here, the Arduino, let me disconnect it. For oh, no, it doesn't matter. It's connected to the computer, but it's not the computer that's doing anything. This wire here, push button on the side of the board. So when this button goes to ground... Did you see the signal changed? Hang on, it'll change back again in a minute. There you go. So this will attach to a signal. Push button at the side of the track. When you push this wire in there, so I'm grounding that wire, the signal will change. Wrong wire, wrong hole. There we go. In the ground hole. There you go, so now the signal's up. And after a little while, it'll go back down again. It's up for 10 seconds. You push the button, it goes up. Train can depart, and down it goes again. Now, if you leave it that way, it'll just repeat the process after a period of time. There's a loop. He says, how long did I make that? There it goes. Um, and that will go back down again on its own. And this time it'll stay down because I've, yeah, so we, we're getting somewhere. So what I had in mind was the, the points. Let me show you. Do you remember I had this in my hand the other day? Well, these contacts are intended to switch um, the frog. But since I'm not using them, when the point motor changes, it will join um, at least two of those together. So for this test project, this is the point in front of the bay platform there. So when that point changes, it would give a clear line for the train. Now, I fully understand that's not really true because there might be other stuff down there and this point here might be wrong. But nevertheless, for a test project, when that point changes, a little delay... And then this signal goes up. Um, and then the train takes off. And as it takes off, a few seconds later, that signal goes back down again. Of course, in the long term, I'd love to get the block detection system to give that output so that when the block were available, the signal would go up. And you could interlock that with the points as well. Hmm. Don't get overcomplicated. Get something working first. Let me just clean this mess up so that you can really see how simple it is. And I'll be right back. There you go. No breadboard anymore. Just a positive and a negative wire. So that would come from your wall. wall. That plugs into there. Um, the servos plus and minus are getting from the same place. And the yellow wire goes off to the pin I've chosen. Um, the blue wire simply comes from one of the other pins and the other blue one here is ground. So if I were to join those two together, the signal operates. It'll wait about 10 seconds and then drop down again. So that's the first project. There you go. And it will wait now for another input. It's getting a little late. So I'm going to leave it there. But you see how I've got a signal to go up and down. We'll hook all that up and actually make it work in the next day or two. 
and I'll show you what I got up to. The mechanics of that are, are simply that. It's just mechanics, springs and strings and um, rods in pipes. Who knows what I'll use, but we'll find a way of doing that. Um, that's the preliminary. We've then got to find a way of slowing things down. So clearly, I've got some learning to do. I've got to learn how to program. So for those of you who do know coding, you can pause this and get a snapshot of that. I have no idea what I'm doing. I've just copied this from elsewhere. I'm guessing, um, I've just said my servo. This is a signal. Apparently, you can type notes to yourself in there, so I did. Um, so the initial position equals 100. I'm thinking that is in degrees, which is why I put 100. Um, because it was close to 90 and I didn't know whether you put 90 or 090 so if I'm putting 100 it avoided that um, pin 2 um, when it gets an input pull it up um, so pull up that's a digital term it's either plus or minus um, then we've got a loop that runs and this is where I didn't want it to repeat over and over again, so you need that um, pin to do its thing. A delay of 10 seconds there, that's how long it stays up, I think. Um, yeah, so I'm not sure even what all the lines do, but by copying and pasting and getting the punctuation just right, that's what it does. Now, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of, you can do this better. Yeah, I know I can, but this is first day, all right? Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm quite proud of myself. I actually got it functioning. I will put it on the layout just so that it's, um, yes, we got something working. Um, but that's it for now. See you next time.